Hello everyone, welcome to the crash course on AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. This is the part 2 of the video series. So let's let's dive deep into the other aspects. So uh, some of the general things and terminologies which we know as the part of this exam, we covered some of the things in the, in the previous lecture. This lecture we are going to talk more about that. So to, to start up with, we need to know about what AWS is and what AWS is going to offer us, right? So since it's an AWS certified exam, we need to know all about that. So AWS is one of the most world's comprehensive, broadly adapted cloud service platform, which provides close to around 200 plus future services across various data centers globally. So millions of customers are using AWS, say it's starting from startups to larger enterprises many of the people are making use of AWS still if you can see AWS is the leader in the market in terms of infrastructure this is the Gardner's quadrant so AWS is still leading the cloud market so it, it holds major of the shares it, it is it is top running currently so this picture will provide a general overview holistic overview on various different AWS services which are currently available so as as of now as of May 2021 AWS is telling they are they are providing close to around 200 plus fully featured services so Coming to the other factors which we need to know, it is like one important thing, it is AWS shared responsibility model. We can expect some questions, something in the exam related to the shared responsibility model. So uh, the shared responsibility model, we need to understand two things. One is the security of the cloud and the other one is the security in the cloud. So security of the cloud is completely managed by AWS. So if you see in this diagram, all the compute, all the storage database, all the hardware which is related to that, all the regions and availability zones, everything will be managed by AWS. But when it comes to security in the cloud while we are deploying the applications while we are deploying the software onto the cloud we need to manage the security in the cloud so platforms applications OS, which we are going to do on the client side data encryption all the networking and all the customer data which we are going to store in cloud everything needs to be managed by us in simple terms security of the cloud is managed by aws and security in the cloud is going to be managed by us so there comes other other important thing to know which is aws well architected framework this is an intensive topic which uh, most predominantly people used to cover as the part of the solutions architect exam but just uh, for our understanding i just added this one to give more overview about what are all the various different five pillars which are getting involved on aws well architected framework so first thing is operational excellence we need to know about the operational excellence it is like how we can do reversible changes how we can deploy our application in a very very small way how we can anticipate the failure so all these things are covered as the part of the operational excellence so we need to design our system in such a way to anticipate the failure to to have very very smaller packets of changes instead of having a very big change security there are security is one important aspect while we are deploying as as we saw in the previous lecture previous slide shared responsibility model we need to deploy our applications in a very secure way in the aws cloud coming to reliability reliability majorly talks about the scalable object scalable options within the AWS so it is like instead of going with vertical scaling it is always um, recommended to go with the horizontal scaling to increase the workload availability and it is like to stop guessing the capacity on cloud so coming to performance efficiency it is like uh, performance efficiency most deviately talks about uh, how efficiently we are um, going to deploy our applications on AWS so wherever possible we need to make use of serverless type of an architectures and it is like uh, going global in minutes is the by default capacity which is provided by AWS. Coming to the fifth pillar, which is the cost optimization, it's it's like we need to design, we need to architect our um, frameworks in such a way the cost will be completely optimized so instead of spending more even even in cloud cloud will provide a lot of cost benefits but even within cloud if you practice a worst, worst type of architectural principles then it will lead to lot of losses so the cost optimization needs to be catered so these are all five important pillars which needs to be considered while deploying any of the things on aws cloud right so to coming to the some some major important topics which you, which you need to remember as the part of the exam these are all very key important things to know as the part of the exam agility which we already discussed it is all about fast movement scalability scalability one important thing it is all about horizontal scaling and vertical scaling so uh, dominantly people in the current trend uh, horizontal scaling is more beneficial when compared to vertical scaling and then there comes the elasticity elasticity and the scalability are interoperable terms which we can use together right so it is more in 
terms of how uh, how elastic your application is how elastic your application towards the various different types of load say even if the load is getting increased your application must have to sustain that load we need to design our application in an elastic way so that uh, everything will be taken care of considering the high availability major factors it is like we need to design our applications with an high available fashion so it is like whenever there is a disaster or anything still now our application must have to be running so that's that's one important factor to remember and about the fault tolerance we need to de design our application in such a way it is fault uh, tolerance towards the fault which means like say something some failure happens to my system some failure happens to my application even then my application must be up and running all the time so that is taken care using some of the principles of fault tolerance and disaster recovery disaster recovery if you see it is like uh, say calamity happens to any of the things because of cyclone because of some sort of an uh, events which is happening on the specific area even though if those things are happening we need to design our application in such a way it needs to be up and running so for for disaster recovery and all these high availability fault tolerance aws provides some of the mechanisms which we call it as backup restore pilot light warm stand by and multi site so these are all various different mechanisms so if you see that it is like if you are managing backup restore will be very minimal where we will take the backups and we will store it in some different place so in case of any disaster we can we can create our systems using that backup and restore this will be very less con less cost the cost involved will be very less but the time taken to retrieve from our failure it will be very high so pilot light is is the another option pilot light where we will manage only minimal amount of infrastructure over there so the time taken to restore from the failure will be slightly less compared to backup restore warm standby is managing an another system in a standby mode so whenever there is a failure we can simply we can switch it on and we can transfer it multi site is managing it across it is like we will be having the different versions of the versions uh, different versions of the applications in different sites so whenever there is a disaster it won't impact our system it will be zero downtime so this this is how it works so for backup and restore the cost will be increasing throughout the line and if you see fail or failover and recovery time it will be decreasing throughout the line so multi site will provide us the complete zero downtime with the lesser rto and rpo to to understand the rto and rpo this is how the picture it's all about rpo is all about recovery point objective which is the time taken it is the data loss it talks about rpo talks about the data loss say whenever there is an a failure incident happened so how long our data how 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 long our data is lost so consider this it is like say i am having a failure which happens in this time frame and then it is like i had recovered my system from the failure in this time frame i had taken the backup of my system in this time frame so which means like i lost the data from here to here so the data loss how much the data i lost because of the failure incident is taken in terms of something called as a recovery point objective and recovery time objective it is all about the time taken for me to recover from my failure so that is what it is all about rto which is the recovery time objective so the ideal systems we need to design the systems in such a way both the rtos and rpo will be very very less and then we need to understand we need to know we need to be aware of capex and opex which we discussed extensively in the previous video capex is all about the capital expense and opex is all about the operational expense capex in the cloud only the opex is getting involved there is very very less involvement towards the capex you need to know about the pay as you go pricing model it is like uh, we are going to pay only for what we are going to use on top of cloud and we need to know about the difference between the monolithic the monolithic and the microservices based architecture which is typically a tightly coupled and loosely coupled architectures so the predominantly in current days it is like microservices based loosely coupled architectures are are used across the organizations because of the benefits it is going to offer and we need to know about acid and base compliance this is more of the database related terminologies so acid is more about atomic consistent isolated and durable which is uh, which is for the relational data stores and base is all about basic availability soft and eventual consistency that is for the no sql type of the databases so coming to the uh, next thing what we need to know is all about the AWS global presence. We need to be aware of uh, AWS global presence. AWS is present all over the globe across various geographies known as the regions. So we are currently, as of May 2021, we will be having 25 regions across the globe. Um, and it is like a region is the geographic presence. So inside the region, we will be having something called as an availability zone. To have an highly available and fault tolerant thing, we will be having multiple available the availability zones inside a single region. So minimum of two to three availability zones in a single region. So currently we are having close to around 
around 80 availability zones as of May 2021. There is another concept called edge locations. You need to be aware of edge locations are third party things which is it is like we are making use of uh, telecom carriers globally across the globe. So considering uh, the number of edge locations, the second picture in here will provide the idea about the edge locations. Edge locations are available all over the globe, across the globe. So it is very very beneficial to provide the content delivery network across the globe. AWS CloudFront is one of the services which uses the CDN to give the data within across the globe with a very minimal latency. So, so to improve the op optimal performance of the data transfer across the globe, we will be making use of edge locations behind the scenes. So this ends the uh, course 2 of my lecture. I hope this is informative for you. I am looking forward to see you in my next lecture.